In this video, we will have a look at the math behind the SIR model that can be used to simulate how a virus is spread in a population. The basic SIR model is used to simulate how a disease or a pathogen is spread between people in a population. The model includes susceptible people that may become infected by, for example, a virus. If a person gets infected, that person moves to the infected compartment, where it can spread the disease to susceptible individuals. Infected individuals will sooner or later recover from the disease, which means that they can no longer spread the disease. Recovered people are assumed to have acquired immunity, which means that they no longer can be infected. To understand how an SRR model works, we need to understand some basic epidemiology and use a simple example. Suppose that our population consists of only 20 individuals. At time point zero, we have 19 susceptible individuals, one infected individual, and no individuals that are immune so far. Since no people leave or enter the population, the total population size is therefore equal to the sum of the initial values. To simulate the spread of the disease, we need to decide on a few parameter values. The values we choose depend on the type of pathogen we like to model and the population density. As an example, we will use these values. In order for an infected person to spread the disease to another person, the infected person must have a close contact with a susceptible person. We here assume that every person in the population has, on average, four such close contacts per day. The probability to transmit the disease during one such close contact is here set to 10%. A person who becomes infected stays infected on average for five days in this example. Let's do a simple simulation of how the disease is spread in the population. Suppose that the infected person has a close contact with these four individuals during the first day. Due to chance, none of the susceptible individuals got infected. Remember that the probability to transmit the disease during one close contact is only 10%. On the second day, the infected person has a close contact with these four individuals. Due to chance, this person became infected, which means that this person can also start to transmit the disease. However, we will here focus only on the first individual that got infected in the population. The person who first brings the disease into the population is called the primary case whereas the individuals who get infected by the primary case are called secondary cases. During the third day, the primary case has a close contact with these four individuals. Due to chance, none of these four individuals got infected during that day. At day number four, the infected person has these four close contacts, where this person happened to get infected. At day number five, the primary case has a close contact with these four individuals where none of these got infected. At day number six, the infected person has recovered because the average time an infected person stays infected is here five days. This means that this person can no longer spread the disease. Note that the primary case spread the disease to two susceptible individuals before it recovered. This number actually corresponds to the so-called R0 value. The R0 value represents the number of individuals on average that the primary case spread the disease to in the population, given that all people in the population are susceptible. The R0 value is determined by the probability to transmit the disease during one close contact how many contacts the infected person has on average per day, and how many days the person is infected. In this case, 
the r naught value is equal to 2, which means that the primary case will on average spread the disease to two individuals if all individuals in the population are susceptible. Note that this person will not spread the disease as efficiently as the primary case, because not all individuals are now susceptible. Suppose that this infected person has a close contact with these four individuals. Since only two out of the four contacts are with susceptible people, the person can no longer spread the disease as efficiently as the primary case did. To estimate how many individuals an infected person spread the disease to on average when not all individuals are susceptible, we can calculate the RE value, also known as the RT value, which is the effective reproduction number. In comparison to the R0 value, the RE value takes into account that not all individuals in the population are susceptible. This ratio represents the proportion of susceptible individuals in the population. Since we now only have 17 susceptible individuals in the population of 20 individuals, 85% of the people in the population are susceptible. An infected person has, on average, 20 close contacts with other individuals in the population during the time the person can spread the disease. Where 85% of these contacts are with susceptible people and 15% are with infected or recovered individuals. This will result in an RE value of 1.7, which means that the infected person will, on average, spread the disease to 1.7 individuals. Since the infected person has fewer contacts with susceptible individuals, compared to the primary case, the RE value will be lower than the R0 value. We'll now try to understand the differential equations that are used for the SIR model. These differential equations are continuous in time, which make them a bit hard to understand. I will therefore explain these equations based on discrete time. The equations tell us how the number of susceptible infected and resistant individuals changes over time. Since the time unit in our example is days, we can think that the equations tell us the change per day. S divided by N gives us the proportion of susceptible individuals in the population at a certain time point, whereas I is the number of infected individuals at a certain time point. Beta is the probability to transmit the disease during one close contact times the number of contacts per day. Beta therefore represents the expected number of people an infected person will spread the disease to per day, given that all close contacts are with susceptible people. In our example, beta is equal to 0.4, which means that an infected person will, on average, spread the disease to, to 0.4 persons per day, if all contacts are with susceptible individuals. Let's try to do some calculations by hand at time point zero, where only one individual is infected and where we have 19 susceptible individuals. If we plug in the value of beta, the initial number of susceptible individuals, and the initial number of infected individuals, and the total number of individuals in the population. Then we see that approximately 0.4 susceptible individuals will become infected during the first day. When we only have one infected person among a lot of susceptible individuals, the proportion of susceptible individuals is approximately equal to 1. The primary case will therefore spread the disease to approximately 0.4 persons during the first day. This means that we can remove 0.4 individuals from the susceptible compartment and place these in the compartment with the infected individuals. This explains why we have a minus sign in front of this term, because 0.4 individuals will go from being susceptible to be infected. 
gamma represents a recovery rate. The recovery rate can be calculated by 1 divided by D, the average time an infected person can spread the disease. In our example, a person can, on average, spread the disease during five days. This means that during one day, approximately 20% of the people in the compartment of infected individuals will move to the compartment with recovered people. In our example, this means that 0.2 infected individuals will recover. I know it sounds strange to have 0.2 individuals, but the model makes more sense if we instead have millions of people in the population. So, this means that if we start with these numbers, we will have the following numbers after the first day, because the number of susceptible individuals should be reduced by 0.4, and the number of infected individuals should increase by 0.2, whereas the number of recovered individuals should increase from 0 to 0 0.2. To see how many susceptible, infected and recovered individuals we have the next day, we simply use these numbers in the calculations and do the math. Note, if you solve this system of equations, you will not get the exact same numbers as shown in this example. This is because I use a time step of one day. To get more accurate calculations, you need to take smaller time steps to reflect continuous time. We will now have a look at the calculations once half of the population has become infected, which means that we will now have 10 susceptible people left in the population. Since only 50% of the individuals in the population are susceptible, an infected individual will only have a close contact with on average, two susceptible individuals during one day, whereas the other two contacts will be with either infected or recovered people. This means that every infected person will spread the disease to 0.2 susceptible individuals, and since we have four infected individuals, 0.8 susceptible individuals will become infected. This means that 0.8 will be added here. Remember that the recovery rate was 0.2 per day, which means that approximately 20% of the infected individuals will recover. Since we have four infected individuals, 0.8 of these will be added to the individuals in the compartment with the recovered people. Note that the second differential equation is equal to zero, which means that the derivative is equal to zero. This occurs at the peak of the outbreak, where the effective reproduction rate is equal to one. When the RE value is equal to one, the spread of the disease will start to decline, because we have reached the so-called herd immunity where the susceptible individuals are less likely to become infected because the disease does no longer spread efficiently due to the higher proportion of recovered individuals in the population. We can simulate the SIR model with the following R code that solves the differential equations numerically. This code is just an extension of the code we discussed in a separate video about solving ordinary differential equations in R. We define our equations, the parameter values, and the initial conditions. Then we solve the differential equations and plot the output, which will generate the following figure. We see that the number of infected individuals reaches its peak after about 13 days, and that the system reaches a steady state after about 70 days where almost no individuals are infected in the population. We see that about four individuals never became infected, since there are about four susceptible individuals left once the outbreak has ended, which is due to the effect of herd immunity. Finally, note that the SIR model relies on a number of assumptions. The first assumption is that the population is closed and includes a fixed number of individuals. In the real world, 
people travel in and out from the population. The second assumption is that susceptible individuals that become infected immediately start to spread the disease. This is not realistic because it usually takes a few days or weeks before you can spread the disease if you become infected. The so-called SEIR model can be used to capture this, which will cause a delay in the outbreak. Another assumption is that all individuals in the population have the same number of contacts per day and have the same probability to spread the disease during each contact. In the outbreak of corona, a lot of people did actually not spread the disease, whereas some people, the so-called super spreaders, could spread the disease to more than 10 individuals each. Also, the SIR model assumes that all individuals have the same probability to meet each other. In a real society, there are important subpopulations, such as daycare centers, families, workplaces, etc. Also, people that have recovered from the disease do not stay immune forever. Sooner or later, they will become susceptible again. In a future video, we'll have a look at extensions of the SIR model that can, for example, include vaccination, interventions, and exposure state. In another video, I show how to simulate the SIR model with the cellular automaton to capture spatial dynamics. This was the end of this video about the basic SRM model. Thanks for watching.